Now, it's not often you hear of a kind, the kind of devotion one man can give to a school district, but this man doesn't have to look very far because he is following in the footsteps of his own father. Please welcome to the stage, with over 20 years of experience as a school board trustee, let's welcome our first guest speaker, school board president, Dr. Robert Sepulveda. Good morning. Oh, yeah. uh, you guys don't realize this, but when you sit up here, you can feel the energy. <laughs> really, I'm serious. You can feel it. It's, imp it's impressive. You know, as a school board member, uh, one of the things that I do is I go around teaching uh, school board members what to do because I'm a master trustee. And one of the things that I would say is when the school board meeting's over, you're not a school board member. You're just the regular Joe Blow. So you honor us by inviting you to your functions because today we're here as regular citizens. So thank you for having us. I want to introduce my fellow board members. Oscar, everybody knows Oscar. And of course, Mr. Fuentes, David. The rest of the board members couldn't be here because they're tied up and uh, with their jobs. And I understand, I just got beeped to the emergency room, so I'm gonna have to leave. I wanna tell you a couple of things. One, observation. I, I walked in and I saw an iPad right here with timing to tell you how much time you have to speak, I guess. And I kid Dr. Alejandro. You know, hey, look, technology, and he goes, well, and I said, what they put at the end when you speak? And he says, yeah, callate. <laughs> so, oh, we're going to do it. But one of the things that I do today, I always like to bring good news, good news, good news. The board always sets goals. And before we set goals, we set philosophies. A philosophy that was adopted many years ago, many, many years ago, when I first got on the board, is lo barato sale caro. For our guests, going cheap is always expensive. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right now, teachers, you're getting a $1,600 pay raise this year. <laughs> Support staff, you're getting your 5% from the mid. And administration. And administration, we're giving you the 3% from the midpoint. What is important about this? <laughs> Districts always ask, how do you do that? You were asked that at a recent meeting. And I always get asked, I was up in Dallas representing the school board a few weeks ago, and I was asked the same way, how do you guys do it? Well, you do it by paying attention, paying attention to what you do, you know, as we go. And you know, this morning I was watching as everyone walked in here, and I gave a lecture when I was in Dallas, and I realized that you know it's true, the Rio Grande Valley is 91% Hispanic. It's pretty amazing. It re it's reflected in here, and you know, like I told my wife, my wife is German. I said, and you guys are probably more Mexican than us, the Anglos, because you eat our food better than us, right? <laughs> so. I tell them, you know, that reminds me of a story. You always have to have a funny story when you speak. And I have a story. There's a story about three guys out on a boat, and the boat started taking on water. Well, of course, the, the guys on the boat have to be appro appropriately divided ethnically. We had an Anglo guy, an Afro-American, and a Hispanic. And the Anglo guy looked over, and he saw an island about a mile away. He says, man, I grew up privileged. I had a swimming pool. I know how to swim. I competed in swimming, I'm jumping, I'm not drowning out here. He jumped in water, beautiful form, started racing towards the island. And before you know it, some sharks came up and <laughs> they ate him up. <laughs> so the Afro-American guy looks at the Hispanic guy and he goes, you know, I barely know how to swim, but I'm a good athlete and I think I can make it. Maybe the sharks are full. I <laughs> Or maybe they just don't like Afro-Americans, right? <laughs> so he says, I'm going to give it a shot because I don't want to die out here. So he jumps in the water and he starts fighting the water, but he's moving. He's moving towards the island. And he gets further along and the sharks just look at him. And he keeps getting closer. And they look at him and all of a sudden they just smile and take off and they eat him up too. <laughs> so the 
Mexican American guy sitting there going, hijo, I barely know how to swim. Cada en cuando me baño. You know? He says, uh, what do I do? And he says, well, maybe they are full by now. I've got no other shot. So he starts dog paddling towards the island. Keeps going and going and going, and the sharks just look at him, and he keeps going and going. And when he's within 100 yards of the island, the sharks smile and said, let's go. So they take off after him, and he starts kicking, and he starts moving, but he's barely moving, and the sharks are coming. And all of a sudden, the lead shark stops, and the rest of the sharks stop. And they go, what's the matter? And he goes, no, nah, the last time I had one of those guys, my rear burned for a day. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I woke you up, so that's the purpose. <laughs> what I do want to say is something that's real important. You know, I have a friend of mine who's really, I consider a genius. He's a physician. And when we were young and first came to Wesico, he did a social experiment. We don't like to do experiment on people, but we did it in the hallway in the hospital because I'm going to prove a point to you. And he says, watch. And we were discussing about attitude. And there was a guy, a nurse, that we all like and very upbeat, always happy, walking towards us. And John, my friend, walks over to him and says, hey, man, what's the matter with you? You don't look right. And you can see the guy's body language just, you know. So what I'm trying to tell you is what we say every day, what we do every day makes a difference. You know, my mother just passed, most of you know that, a few weeks ago. And one of the most beautiful things I saw in that hospital because we had her in the ICU for three months and then she came home, luckily, God blessed us a year with her, was that the guys that you don't think are important in the care of patients, the people that clean up the room, the people that change, the people that do those things, have the greatest impact on patients because of their attitude. And your attitude in schools can be tremendous on children. I say that because it's important, and it's important because I can remember when I transferred to Stephen F. Austin. At that time, this town was segregated, and we were the, some of the few Hispan first Hispanics to go to that school. And I remember they would pick on us and do stuff like that, but it was all kid stuff. But we had a janitor that would always tell us, no se agüiten, look forward, muevanse. You know, this song that you're playing today, uh, you know, I remember when it came out, it's from my era, 1970s, and uh, I said, that's got to be one of the most upbeat songs I've ever heard. Miss McVeigh from Fleetwood Mac did a phenomenal job with it, and to me, it symbolizes what you can do. You can do a lot for this district. Our, our role as board members is to provide a good working environment, and we believe in this. We are one of the best paying school districts from San Antonio South. Believe me, the data is there. You can look it up on the computers. We're proud of what we do. We want to provide you with the best facilities, et cetera. It takes a lot of work. And you know, every now and then, it isn't the board. It's the administration working together as a unit with the board. And I think that's very, very important as we move to the future. We have to do something for our children because the future is here. Guys, thank you. i got to go work. So thank you. And I'm going to turn you over to the program. And